Welcome back ADF fans. This video is going to be focused on shaping your data in Azure Data Factory's data flows when you have larger complex data sets as your sources. So we're going to focus primarily on the select transformation, which I like to think of as the shapeshifter transformation. It gives you a way to define the shape of your data and manipulate your metadata within your data flow. In fact, you can use the select anywhere within your data flow to change or create a projection of your data. Okay, so let's get started and I'll show you what I mean. On the screen, you see that I already have a data flow canvas that has been primed with two sources. Both of these sources are pointing to the same data. This is my mocked up loans CSV text delimited file. Now this first one you see has a projection. This projection is coming directly from the data set. So I look at the data sets for this source, source one. This is loans right over here. And you see the data set is all string data type. So this is an, a discovered schema from this file. Data Factory was able to define these column names coming from the file because it's text limited CSV. Everything is just assumed to be string because there is no physical data type stored with a CSV file. Now back on the data flow, the second source down here, this is also my loans data, but this is pointing to a different version of the data set. This data set does not have any schema in it at all. So if I go over to that data set, you'll see that I'm still pointing to a loan CSV file, but I have not asked data factory to import the schema. So it's schema less. So back on the data flow, what happens then is the projection is going to be empty for this source because there is nothing coming from that data set. So let's go back to the top and we'll stick here for a couple more minutes on the source transformations. I want you to understand this. So here under the projection, because this is just a copy of what is in the data set. Now that I'm in data flow, you can get a little bit smarter with this. You can actually infer those data types. So I can say detect data type and data factory will go into spark and will sample that data and will give you the inferred data types based on the data in those columns. You have some control over the default formats that are found too. You can click on default, define default format, and you can set, for example, what you would like the um, string whole number or the string numeric types to be set to when it finds a whole number. You can set the default for the date and time formats and things of those natures. But I'm going to just let it stick with its own, doing its own thing, I'm not going to set any of the defaults beyond anything that comes out of the box. And this is what we get. We get the uh, number columns that are going to be found by data factory and changed from string to integer, double, whatever else is found. There's booleans in here as well. All right, so now back on the source two, which is the schema list. Because I have no schema, I have sets under the source options, allow schema drift and and for a drifted column type. So you can get that same sort of manual auto detection of data types through schema drift. Just set, just click this box, say infer a drifted column type. So this will do the same thing that you had to click the button manually. And we'll automatically do that as columns come in through the schema drift capability of data factory. The projection will still be empty, but you can import this projection. So if I click import projection. This will tell data flow, even though this, the data set had no schema defined, I want to do that here. So I'm going to go ahead and define the projection by going out to the physical file and pulling in the shape of that file. And there you go. So you get the same thing, but I'm going to wipe this out. I don't want to have anything in the bottom because I want to show you select uh, and how it operates differently from a schema bound or early bound um, data set and source versus a late binding data flow at the bottom. Okay, so let's go back up to the top with the early binding and the projection with a schema. Now, when we go into select here, what we're going to do is we're going to first just explain some of the default settings in the select. Now, because this schema is fairly large, if I look at the inspect, you see that we had 74 columns within this CSV file. So what Data Factory does to make it more responsive and easier for you to work with it is it just does these things where it sets an automatic rule. So this is rule based select mapping. And the syntax is here, here, you see here at the beginning of the expression is really just the comment. So we commented it for you so you know what's being done. And we use the trick of saying true. So the true expression, the true function in the expression language of Data Factory and data flow will just always pass everything through. It's always going to resolve to true. So this is really a Boolean. And this is anything that matches this expression, 
then map those columns that match that to this. In dollar dollar is the syntax we use to say this. So we're not changing the name of the columns here at all. We're just mapping everything. So all this rule does, this says map everything from the left to everything to the right. So don't change anything at all. That's basically what that is. There's also a bit of special handling done on the source with larger schemas like this. You'll see that the UI for the projection is a little bit different than for smaller schemas where you can't just edit these. These are static until you come over here and click on the pencil icon to edit those. And that's just because you want the UI to be more responsive. So here we are in a larger schema and this is what you're going to work with when you have this situation in Dataflow. Now you absolutely can come in here and you can continue to do um, what we call fixed mapping or column by column mapping. You will get the full list of all 74 columns in here. So if you want to change, I don't know, um, let's say initial list status to say initial list, list status two, you could absolutely just do that sort of manual mapping. Okay, that's still available to you. But what you can do is now you can make rules in here as well. And so let's talk a little bit about that. So let's delete the default rule here. And let's say, for example, what I wanted to do was I wanted to only take just the number uh, columns. I, I don't want any of the strings. So I want to do some mass manipulation across all of the doubles and integers within um, the schema. So what I can do is I can make a rule to do that without needing to go and find each one manually and click one by one. So let's go ahead and build a rule here. This is going to be, has to resolve to a Boolean value. So what I'll do is I will use the internal syntax, a special syntax with data flows that allows me to determine what the type of each column in my metadata is. It's simply called type. So I can say we're type not equal to strings, so everything except the strings in my matching column on the left. And that will give me every column returned that is not a string. What I can do then over here is let's go ahead and take the return, which is this, for each found column and let's add something to it. Let's say underscore not a string just for this purpose so go ahead and save and finish and then there is this eyeglasses icon over here and this will give you uh, the meta functions for each of these expressions and tell you what is matched and what the result is going to be so here you see we have every numeric type in that data set and we're calling it that underscore not a string but let's say we wanted to do something where we wanted to actually take um, all of these except for the ID because let's say the ID is our primary key so we don't want to call it not a string because we need, we need to match it later for some matching conditions so you can get as complex as you want to within these expressions so we could say where the type is not equal to string name so name is the special internal function for returning the name of the column the metadata name uh, not equal to ID and there we go so now we should get every column except for ID but what happens now is ID is not going to be passed through. So when I look at the outgoing metadata, ID is not there at all. So I still need to include that column. So what I'll do is I'll make another rule. So what I'm going to say is I also want to include just the ID. So this is very simple just to say I just want it like that. Okay, so now what I'll see is on my inspect, my outgoing columns includes every theta you just change the order and you'll see the ID is right there. Okay, so you can combine these rules in very interesting ways uh, with fixed mapping or multiple rules as well. It's all available to you. Now, the bottom row where we had schema drift turned on is going to be a little bit different because there is no metadata. The whole concept behind late binding and schema drift is you don't need to define the columns up front during your design time. It's going to be defined at runtime. So what we'll do is to do the same kind of thing in the select. What happens is when you add a select to a schema drift flow, the first thing you should notice is there's not going to be any mapping here because there are no columns. So we're going to turn off auto map. The auto mapping will just say send everything from the left side out to the right side of that transformation. So I'm going to turn that off. When I go to add mapping, I don't get a selector. There is no fixed mapping because there are no fixed fields. So everything's going to be rule based. So we can do essentially the same kind of thing, but let's do the opposite. Let's say that we want the type of string only for uh, this flow at the bottom. And uh, let's do the same kind of thing. We'll say this column name plus this time we'll say underscore is a string. There you go. Oops, is a string. Perfect. Now another key difference is because there is no metadata stored in this flow, to see what your results are you need to go over to data preview. 
right? So I could inspect in real time live very quickly the metadata on this top stream because it's all stored there within the transformations. There is none here on the bottom because I have no projection. I'm creating the projection on the fly through schema drift. So you click data preview and then you will get your results here. And you see that every column is adorned with a, an icon that indicates that these are drifted columns. And you see that I have all of the strings. These are only strings. You see the indicator right here, these are strings. And it is appended with underscore is a string. So I get the same results there. Now, because I wanted to include the ID column, I need to, let's say, join these flows later. To include the ID column, I can't do fixed mapping here. So I need to do a rule. So we'll do a rule. We will also add to it the ID and we're not gonna change the name. So all you have to do is just say name is ID and dollar dollar is going to keep that same name over here it is your expression function on the right and now I'm going to go back to data preview I will see the same data I'm just going to add in now the ID column in that as well and there it is okay so thanks for watching